Well, hey everybody, it's Monday, and uh, welcome to Wes Hagen's video wine blog, the truncated version as we started last week. So today we're in the cellar, and we're tasting the 2013 Pinot Noirs. I've been here for about four hours. I've tasted about 72 wines out of 58 barrels. Some of them we had to taste twice. Uh, we had a client today who was tasting some wine to make a barrel selection uh, of his own wine, but more importantly, we're looking for a couple of blends uh, for Clos Pepe this year. So in our glass right now, we have 2013 Pinot Noir, and uh, we've been tasting the 2013s all day. Every barrel has shown a little bit of different character. It's almost maddening how much difference there is between all the different barrels and the different styles that are produced in a single vintage. And then blending them together, hopefully they'll become gestalt. So what we were talking, I'm here with, um, with Nina and Tara from the North American Sommelier Association. And I said that right? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So we, uh, I asked them to stop by and sort of double check our work on what we're doing. And uh, we winnowed uh, all the wines down to about 10 wines. And then we had uh, the ladies come in and taste with us. And I'm going to have them give their uh, sort of uh, interpretation. Uh, so we, we're looking for four wines today. One uh, wine that's called Signature, which is going to be the most elegant and delicate of the blends. Then we're going to do a dark side blend, which is going to be big, rich, and ripe. And then we're going to do our Vigneron Select blend, which is going to be for long-term aging. And then all the barrels that don't make the cut from those bar barrels will all be blended together into our estate wine, which is generally the best wine we make for the first five years as it develops. So I found the vintage to be uh, quite balanced, a little bit richer than 2012. Uh, the wines were either quite earthy or quite uh, rich. I think with the client we were tasting, I think uh, both Nina and Tara probably tasted wines more from the rich side. But uh, what did you guys think of the 2013 vintage? Amazing. Um, um, first of all, these wines are only 10, oh, 10 months About old, 10 really. Months old. And they've been at a malolactic now for two months, About right? two months, yep. Um, so, I mean, for me... The development of the wines, um, you know, it, it was different than other barrel taste things I've done. And I've never done this kind of lot by lot, yep. clone by clone, right, site by site yep. tasting of such a young vintage. Number one, amazing to me that the wines um, have um, unbelievable clarity. They're beautifully limpid. I mean, you can see how elegant they are going to be. Um, you know, I, I already was able to identify the balance um, of the sapidity, the minerality, the fruit. It wasn't all about the fruit. It yep. wasn't that they were so fruit forward. I mean, yes. the, the, they really were coming together already. And obviously, they have so much more to go. They do. So um, the wines, for me, lended toward either like spicy and mm. fruity, yeah. right? Yeah. And then those that were maybe a little more restrained or the fruit was less less kind of like primary. mushed up you know primary mushed raspberry or cherry sure. and more something that was a little on the more elegant side um and with a, maybe a little more sapidity already yeah you know i found the wines were either like fruity big and rich or sort of like uh stony and elegant and mineral and almost like volnay like I, I found that they were either totally new world or totally old world and there wasn't much in between and generally i found uh, october 1st to be the date that separated everything that we picked sort of before october tend to be a little more mineral uh, a little more elegant and everything we picked after october uh, to me uh, tended to be uh, a, a little more a little more forward and a little more rich but what did you think of the wines? Um, i love them as well i can echo what nina said and I think it was just very interesting to see the process of how you go mm -hmm. everything through everything. Um, I think, as you said, a lot of the heavy lifting was done before we got here. So we didn't try all 54, but we got to do several cool lineups toward the end, three, three, and three, and then kind of put the last ones together. So it was very interesting to see kind of that process and yeah. the difference between, like you said, the earthier ones. I kind of... If um, if you were those. if you're going to define the wines outside of Santa Rita Hills, if someone said the tasting you did at Santa Rita Hills or in Clo Pepe today, would there be a region that you would say uh, approximates the flavor <laughs> of what you had out of these barrel samples? If you were if you were guessing and you, someone said these aren't Santa Rita Hills wines, what would you have guessed that they were? Is there is there another typicity that that you could wrap your head around, or is these are these purely Santa Rita Hills from you from your perspective? Wow, well, it's a really good question <laughs> because um, honestly, after all the wines that you know, all the wine tasting that we've done and all our education, I think one of the things we're still trying to do is come up with: is there a classic 
classic Santa Rita Hills. Is there yeah. a classic Russian River aside from the obvious that people say? And you're a farmer. Yeah. And so for you, it's coming down not just to from your sub AVA, yeah. but down to your plots and your micro plots. Uh, we've got three soil samples, four clones, and you know what? I don't think the clones really matter too much. I think it's more about where it is in the vineyard, and I think that showed today. The pomard should be the most elegant, old world clone that shows the most minerality and the less overt primary fruit, and it showed the most today. So the clones, I think, are a trope. Clones are basically to, con to you know, we like clones as Americans because they have numbers, and when they have numbers, we think we understand them. We don't understand them. Clones are always, I think, um, subvert themselves to place, and uh, I think what we tasted today was a lot of subtle differences in soil and barrel and yeast and uh, place. I think, I think you can pretty much all kind of sum it up into place. But um, I wanted to thank you ladies for coming out. Thank tasting you, some wine with us. I think the 2013 vintage is going to be a really nice blend, a little bit bigger and richer than 2012, but there's also going to be a depth and a minerality and a complexity to these wines that, if you really pay attention to them, will, will absolutely stun you. I think if you're looking for a big overt fruit and wines that will get high point scores, you may miss the magic of 2013, which is to slow down Give these wines three to four years, maybe even five to six years. Put them on a table with the people that you love. Give them an hour to really become with food and friends and family. And uh, I, think, I think 2013 is something we can all look forward to. So cheers. Have a great day. And I'm going to uh, turn around and go behind the camera and turn it off because that's how we roll. Thanks <laughs> okay. so much. Awesome. Thank you, ladies.